Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome to another episode of FTL. Now, if you would like to skip straight to the action and skip all of our little chit-chat about the ships, you can click right about here, right about now, and that'll do just that for you. However, if you have decided to stay and listen to what we're doing today, excellent, and let's get right to it. Here we are with a new game. So, today we're going to be flying in the Federation Cruiser Type A. It's been a while since we've tried out the Federation Cruiser, but I figured it was time to come back to it. So we're going to rename this puppy the VSS Apocalypse, I think. Yes, indeed. We've got four crew and four riders of the Apocalypse, so that works out great. We'll rename our human crew Death. We'll name rename our Mantis War. Excellent. Our raw crew member would be Pestilence, but it's a little bit too long to have it all fit, so we're going to use Plague instead. And our NG can be Famine, because I doubt the NG eat anything anyway. So it's more or less appropriate. If plague's immune to any kind of disease, Famine doesn't eat, war fights, and death is people. So, let's talk about our ship a little. Federation Cruiser, pretty standard stuff, you get it for beating the game. It's pretty fun to use, because it comes with some pretty interesting things. First of all, you have four crew of varied races. You have a Burst Laser Mark II as your initial weapon, which is a fairly decent starting weapon. And you also have the Artillery Beam. Right here it is. It lets you fire a beam, more or less like a pike beam. Fairly long range, just one damage to everything it hits. But it also fires automatically when the timer runs out, so you can't aim it. And it automatically pierces shields, which makes it pretty good for dealing with high-end enemies. Only problem with it is, at the beginning, it has a 50 second cooldown, which is pretty monumentally long. With upgrades, you can bring it down to 20, but that does take additional power as well. Apart from that, the ship is fairly standard with the basic gear, basic levels in shields and dodge, all that good stuff. It is also worth noting that the layout is a bit strange, because you have your engines and your helm right beside each other, shields in the middle of the ship, and weapons way over here. Thankfully, they do give us a Mantis, so by putting him at the end, we'll be able to run him back fairly quickly if he needs to. And if we put our NG in the shields, they'll have a good range of access to the whole ship if any repairs are needed. We have no special augmentations, although I think having this special weapon system does count. And, last thing to talk about, are the achievements necessary to unlock the next level. There's this one, Master of Patience, for using only the artillery beam to destroy an enemy ship. I did talk about this in the previous... Uh, mission with this cruiser, but I figured it was worth mentioning now. This one's really easy, especially if you find a ship that has no uh, shields, or weapons that can't get through your shields, you can just sit there. It's pretty easy. And diplomatic immunity. While using the Federation cruiser, use your crew and four special blue event choices by Sector 5. This is actually harder than it looks. It's entirely luck-based, so you can't rely on getting it at all. If you get it, though, good for you. All you basically have to do is find the events and use your blue options. As far as Artillery Master goes, get into Sector 5 in the Federation Cruiser without upgrading your weapon system. I had a lot of fun with this achievement, actually. It involves basically maxing out your shields and dodge, and maxing out your artillery beam, and trying to avoid as much damage as you can. But if you can get all those, you unlock the Nissus, a pretty interesting alternate version. But for now, we're going to start with what we've got. We are, of course, playing on normal, and let's get right into it. So here we are. The data we carry is vital to the Federation fleet as always. We'll need to gather some supplies and explore everywhere we can on the way. So we're going to try and do just that. Alright, we're going to send them to their positions. Death is actually going to take over the engines and Plague is going to move into the helm. Reason being, well, as much as I dislike the rock race, by putting them in the helm you negate a lot of the disadvantages, i.e. the fact that they move incredibly slowly. Their enhanced health, their ability to tank out fire damage, makes them great at staying in one room at all costs which is basically what you want your captain to do, because you don't want to have to take them out of there when you're in a fight. But, we have things set up like we want more or less now, so let us jump forwards. We have a distress beacon over here, but we're going to jump to this little beacon first. Might as well get as much as we can. Alright, we find a rebel automated scout near this beacon. Despite being in pristine condition, it appears to be deactivated. So we could try and scrap it and just gather 8 scrap, but we're going to try and fight it or steal it. And we accidentally reactivate the ship's AI. Weapons and shields burst online, and we prepare to fight. It does have some bombs, which is a little bit unfortunate, but our burst laser should be able to take them out no problem. No problem. It might be a small bomb, though, which means it might fire before we get a chance to stop it. I believe that's the fastest firing bomb. But it looks like we managed to block it nonetheless. Excellent. So, now that he's been neutralized, we can work on taking them out more. One of the problems with this ship is the fact that you only do have a burst laser as your initial weapon. If you do take any damage to your weapon system, all of your firepower goes away. You do have the 
Artillery Beam, giving you some additional backup firepower, but to be honest, the Artillery Beam is not entirely reliable when it has a 50 second cooldown. <laughs> it's a little bit, a little bit much. When it's down to 20 seconds, it's a, a force of... <laughs> blah, blah, blah. When it's down to 20 seconds, it acts like a force of nature and wrecks everything it meets, but at 50 seconds, it's a bit slow. The ship explodes, giving us two missiles, a drone part, and 11 scrap. Definitely better than 8 scrap and nothing else. Let's jump to this distress beacon and keep moving. What have we here? Ah, there's a trap. Ah, they say! I knew someone would fall into our dastardly trap! It appears this distress beacon was nothing but a decoy for a pirate ambush. Well, well, pirates, you have the same weapons as before. You have a basic laser, and a... probably a small bomb, probably some other kind of bomb, but probably a small bomb. We will find out if it fires before we get a chance to intercept. Nope, did not. Must mean it's some other kind of bomb. Now, I am also using the high-res backgrounds mod, giving me this beautiful look at space in the background. Oh, it's on fire there, that's good. As well as a modified version of diversity mod, which is what makes our some of our weapons look quite cool. We haven't encountered any of those yet, but we will sooner or later. So, just so you're aware of what's going on there. Blast them in the weapons again, make them regret leaving that room. They have not repaired their helm, so they can't dodge any of our attacks, and we can just destroy them at our leisure. Alright guys, now you're going down. Boop, 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 boop. Dead. Problem solved. Alright, ship explodes, and we gather a fuel, two missiles, and 12 scrap as a result. None too shabby, we're making some money. We do want to get enough money to get our level 2 shields fairly quickly. We want to try and get new weapons if we can, although that's really a random chance thing. Not a whole lot we can do to influence that. We detect a re rebel automated ship nearby. It doesn't engage and seems to be patrolling around a long-range sensor station. Well, we don't really need the sensor station, but if it lets us know where asteroids and suns are, then I'd say it's definitely worth it. And besides, it's always worth attacking to get that money. They do have a dual laser, though, and a beam, and a beam drone, so this might be a dangerous fight for us. We're probably going to take a bunch of hits. Hopefully they don't hit our weapons room, though, otherwise we will be in trouble. And they hit us in the weapons room. Not before we took out their shield penetrating power, though, so while we are a little bit neutralized as well, so are they. However, they did set us on fire, too, which I don't particularly like. Guys, okay, you need to get in here. We're going to open these doors, vent out the fires, because I don't want my shield room bursting in flame. You get in there, we turn on the burst laser. Their weapon room should be very slow in coming back online because of the fact that it is a automated drone, so it has no people working it. So we can basically just sit here and relax a little bit longer. Now we knocked out the shields. Good, good. Close those doors. Vent the oxygen through the whole ship. There we go. Close the doors. Send the NG back to the shields. And they still can't hurt us, so we're going to hit them in the helm. Uh-oh. There we go. Artillery beam and our burst laser simultaneously struck, taking out the entire ship. So we access recent scans from the station, gathering map data and 8 scrap. Awesome. So is there anything... D oh, good thing I didn't jump there. It looks like it was an ion storm. That would not have been friendly. So let's work our way up to this distress beacon and then work our way out, I guess. Sounds like a good course of action to me. What do we find here? We jump into a system with, with pirates advancing on our position. They're refusing all hails, so we prepare to fight. They do have a bunch of lasers, though, so we're going to want to hit them. Although we're probably going to hit them at about the same speed as they hit us. Yes, indeed. We might even get a shot off a little bit earlier, but they're probably not going to be able to intercept their shots. Well, we intercepted some of them, but not enough to stop them hitting our weapon system again. Guys, come on. Whoa, didn't mean to grab you. Stay there, Plague. Famine, you're going to go help war fix the weapons, and then we're going to get back to work. Alright, now, you get back to your position. We need to kill these guys. Hopefully we'll hit them in the weapons again, because yes, like I suspected, that burst laser mark 2 is just about repaired. Oh no. My mistake there, guys. I forgot to turn off my Steam notifications in-game. I'll do that right now. Whoops. Anyway, happens sometimes. Now they're trying to surrender to us. They say they cannot believe how well-equipped we are and want to offer us two fuel, one drone part, and nine scrap if we let them live. Well, that does sound reasonable. We don't really need the drone part, and we want a little bit more scrap than that, so we're not accepting that surrender, guys. Tough luck. Now, it will take two more shots to kill them, unless our artillery beam happens to fire at the same time. We're going to keep firing on their weapons to keep that burst laser mark 2 locked down, because that thing hitting us is probably the worst thing that could happen, and the artillery beam should get the kill. And there it goes. Slice that ship right in half. Ship explodes, giving us a fuel, a drone part, and 15 scrap. Not bad. 
Now, we just about have enough money to power up level 2 shields, so we're going to hang on to our money a little bit and then do that. I think we're going to go this way up the way. Sounds like a good use of space to me. What do we find here? Our arrival is greeted by numerous computer alerts. The nearby automated rebel scout has deployed a virus disrupting our shields. Uh-oh, that's not good. Hopefully it won't cause further problems before we can destroy it. You say that, but it has a cloak, and it's just knocked out our shields. So that's three damage that's almost guaranteed to hit us. That is not a good start here. I guess I should have bought those shields. The game is punishing me for not trusting my gut. And... Ow, ow, ow. That's five damage. Holy cow. That hurt. I don't know why I said three damage. That's definitely five. Ow. Miss, miss, miss. Please miss. Stop killing me. I don't have the firepower to stop you. And that hurts. Well, this is definitely not good. Definitely not good. We are getting pummeled here. Hopefully we'll be able to recover, but we've taken a lot of damage. Not necessarily just hull damage, either. We're taking damage on our crew as well. Go fix up the medbay there. Pl uh, famine, otherwise we are going to be dead. Wow, those both missed. That was lucky. Hit them in the weapons again with a burst laser. If we can knock out their weapons completely, then we can kill them at our leisure. But if not, we are going to be very dead soon. Turn on the medbay, since we might as well. I don't have active shields anyway, and somehow they missed us again twice. That's amazing. Close those doors. I don't know why they're still open. Send you back in to repair the shield room. They cloaked themselves, but... Oh, they brought their dual laser back online, too, the stinkers. All right, you're going to come into the med bay and heal yourself up quickly while they're invisible. And they're shooting us again. And are they going to hit weapons? No, they hit the shields. First laser them for the kill, please. There we go. That was not a good fight. Not at all. Ship explodes, giving us three fuel, two missiles, and 14 scrap. <clears throat> yes, that was definitely less than ideal. You're going to go heal up in there. I'm buying level 2 shields, powering them up. <coughs> Excuse me. Now that will not happen again. Magnificent. You can no longer knock my shields entirely out and do in like half of my health bar and damage. Jerks. Alright, power off the engines for no, no particular reason, just so we can heal up our mantis. Heal up war. Power back in the engines, and keep moving. Let's go. Now, what have we here? Something better, I hope. At first, it appears we've arrived at an empty system, but a ship appears from behind a planet and hails us. Ah! I am the Dread Pirate Tuco. Prepare to die. <laughs> my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Something like that, right? Anyway, shoot these guys in the weapons, and uh, problems should be solved. This, the, one of the problems with this ship is that it's not the most diverse until you manage to find some other weapons. The fact is, only starting with one weapon, not the most exciting thing. We do have the artillery beam, but until you get it leveled up, it's not the most useful either. Their weapons apparently caught fire, which worked out in the best for us. Knock out their shields, so now they do not have any defenses against our shots, and our burst laser to the helm will prevent them from running away. Now, we should be able to take that out no problem here. Bam, bam, and they're trying to surrender, offering us eight missiles, a drone part and seven scrap. That would be amazing if we needed missiles. We don't need them for the moment, though, so we're not accepting that surrender. We want more of the raw scrap. They're repairing their shields, probably their weapons simultaneously. Doesn't really matter either way, because our next salvo will kill them. And down they go. Nice try there, guys. Ship explodes, giving us two missiles, a drone part, and 16 scrap. That's much better than much better for our purposes. If we find a missile soon, that will be kind of irritating, but as it stands, that, that definitely worked out for us. Now we have a little bit of money, but nothing to spend it on yet, so we're going to keep going. We do want more power, and then more power for our engines. An advanced rebel automated ship remains stationed near a small rebel space station, which appears to be a storage vessel for military goods. Let's attack that ship and get that storage cache! They have big weapons, though. Two heavy laser mark ones, which are advanced in <laughs> advanced, which are affected by our diversity mod, making them look pretty cool in my opinion, and probably a Leto missile launcher. Which is gonna do no damage to us, thankfully. Hit them in the weapons. Unfortunately for us as well, the last weapon that we knock out is going to be that missile launcher. Only one that can actually hurt us, but whatever. Hits us in the engines, of course it does. Burst laser them in the weapons again to take that missile launcher offline, please. There we go. Now death can casually fix the engines, and we can go about our business killing these suckers. We're actually going to hit them in the helm, because regardless, it's going to take us two salvos to destroy this ship. Oh, really? Uh, that's exactly what I was worried about. Missing shots like that. 
So, we'll have to try again. Burst laser to the helm, and that'll make it so we don't miss again, although it's likely at this point that our artillery beam is actually going to get the kill, because we <laughs> missed another one, really? Kill him, artillery beam. Oh. Artillery beam shot right underneath that line. Some of these ships that have a uh, median in the middle of their graphic often shoots directly underneath or directly over where all the rooms are. We get 18 scrap from the broken ship, and when we investigate the station, we find that there was nothing there. It was abandoned or stripped clean. Nothing useful. That's unfortunate, but we can buy power bars and put that into our engines. Very nice. Death, you're actually going to go heal up a little bit. Take the power bar out of the engines, put it in the med bay. Anyone else injured? No, everyone else is doing fine. Put them back there. Power off the uh, med bay, back in the engines, and let's jump again! Jumpin', jumpin', jumpin'. If we have one, two three, four jumps left, we should be able to get all of those, and then we'll be perfectly positioned to get out the exit. What's this? We receive a message from a nearby ship when we arrive at the beacon. They say, Greetings, and welcome to our beacon. For a small fee, we'll let you continue on your way. Well, it's a nice offer, guys, but I think we were going to reject it. They have a dual laser, so that's not a problem, but they do have a Leto missile launcher, which is a problem. I'm not entirely sure if it's Leto, but I believe it is. We'll have to see how much damage it does when it hits us. In the meantime, though, we're going to worry about... Yeah, it's definitely Leto. It fires really fast and does one damage. Unfortunately, it does one damage to our weapons bay, and our salvo missed their system completely. Way to miss, guys. Way to miss. Here come some more missiles. Hopefully we dodge these ones. No such luck. Hit us in the engines. Come on, guys. Power up the burst laser. Shoot them in the weapons. Try not to get hit by another rocket. Seriously. And it hits us in the weapons. Are you serious? This is the one room you cannot hit me in. Okay, if you hit me in this room, I cannot do anything about it. <laughs> hit something else. There we go. Alright, empty room. That's good. There's plenty of empty rooms in this ship, too. I don't know why they keep picking our weapons. It's like they know what they're doing. It'd be unfortunate if they managed to hit our artillery beam, though, because it's right about ready to fire. It is somewhat depressing to realize that we only have half of our health bar left, though. The artillery beam fries across a bunch of rooms. They're trying to run away. But unfortunately for them, the combined forces of the artillery beam and the burst laser does take them out. Ship explodes, giving us a missile, a drone part, and 12 scrap. Oh, definitely not good that we're down less of a, less down to less than a third of our health bar already. Let's keep moving and hope we get some more good money. What do we have here? We detect another rebel scout on approach to a small refueling outpost. The weapons are charged, but they're not yet firing, so we'll intervene to defend those poor souls. The rebel responds to our threat, saying they don't know who we are, but that no one defies them. They do have an attack drone and a dual laser, so they do have the potential to get through our defenses. But, only if everything hits, which is considerably fairly likely. Nope, both of their shots missed. That's nice for us. Knock out the dual laser. Next, we will knock out their shields, I think, or their drone. Let's knock out the drone, because that way, if they repair the weapons, they're still not going to be able to get through our shields. And we missed three times. Way to go there, guys. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Let's try again. Burst laser those weapons down before they fire, please. And you bucked all but one shot. That's 50% of the shots, but <laughs> whatever. Did you level up and he didn't? There we go. I don't know exactly what happened there, but whatever. Knock out the drone, please. And there it goes. The drone is offline. They're still trying to fix their weapons and the drone. We are going to hit them in the... Oh, with the artillery beam. And the artillery beam kills them. Very nice. Ship breaks apart and we gather a missile, a drone part, and 15 scrap. When we contact the outpost, they thank us for saving them, giving us 4 fuel and 11 scrap. Not bad. Yeah, this ship is not the best for trying to do boarding with, because your artillery beam, which is part of the entire point of having a ship, has a tendency to fry you when you're not looking. Let's upgrade our weapons bay. The reason I'm upgrading the weapons bay is not to put something in it, it's to protect me from having it get damaged. Now this means we can take one damage in the weapons bay without immediately dying. We're also going to... we have one, two... we even have three even more jumps. We have one here, two to there, three to there. So let's jump to this empty beacon, which doesn't have a fight in it, and then we'll work our way back to the exit. Don't know what's over here, but you never know what you might find. We find a small rebel ship nearby. It seems to have been refitted for transport rather than combat, and doesn't seem to want to engage us. Well, that's fine. We're going to demand the surrender of your goods anyway. All right, we're prepared to secure their cargo by force. They don't want to fight, and they're trying to escape. Only problem is, if they do manage to escape, we will be in a bit of trouble here because of the fact that they will alert the rebels of our presence, and our nice two time, <laughs> our nice two jumps to get away is going to turn into no jumps to get away. They also managed to hit us in the shields, which is a terrible thing, and we didn't manage to take out the en the helm in our first salvo either. Not the best. Come on, shields. 
And hit them in the helm again. We need to get these guys from running. There we go. Helm is now broken. There is going to be someone in there repairing it, and they're going to be pretty good at it, too. They're likely going to get it down pretty quickly. So we're going to hit them in the weapons with our next salvo, and then back on the helm again. Probably would have been a better choice to hit them in the engines, but I did want to get that damage potential out of the way. Now they have fixed the helm back up to level 1, so they're going to be getting out of here very quickly if we can't knock them out. Hit them in the helm, please. And there we go. The artillery beam should fire before they get a chance to fix it again, and that should kill them. And go. Very nice. Not getting away this time, suckers. Searching the remains, we find the cargo is military-grade drones. We bring them on board. 11 scrap and a defense drone mark 1. Not fantastic, because, well, we don't have a drone bay, but it might be good later, because you can't get stealth in, stealth in this ship, as far as I know, and having some way of blocking missiles is never a problem. As we jump forward, we find a distress beacon near a small asteroid belt, and find a ship with pirate markings partially crushed between the two large rocks. It must have been illegally mining the belt without proper equipment. I'd love to try and dislodge the ship by shooting the rocks, except for the fact that it has a chance of doing a bunch of damage to us, and I don't really want to take damage. Let's try and destroy and loot the ship instead. This has the opportunity of either having you get something out of it, or more likely having you get attacked by pirates. Either one, more or less okay in my books. We decide the pirate is not worth saving, and fire a few volleys into their hull, causing the ship to depressurize and break apart. We move in to loot the remains, getting two missiles, a drone part, and 14 scrap. Poor pirates. I don't know if you deserve that, guys, but that's what you get. We're going to upgrade our engines uh, so that we have a little bit better dodge chance and jump to the exit. What's over here? Someone offering us cheap repairs? That would be nice. We arrive at the Long Range Beacon where we find a refueling station here. We can purchase fuel for cheap. Alright, well, let's buy six fuel for 12 scrap because you can never go wrong with fuel. We are getting a little bit low on money, though, and we have no way of doing repairs. So hopefully we get lucky. We could go to a pirate-controlled sector or a rock-controlled sector, and the reason I'm not going to the rock-controlled sector is because rocks have a tendency to have more missiles. So it's going to be to the pirates. Or at least we have a bit of variety. Here we go. What have we in this sector? We found a few Federation-friendly planets still existing in this sector, but they are constantly under attack by pirates. This is a dangerous area, so we'll have to be careful. Is everyone back in full health? No, people are quite damaged. Death, you're going to go heal up before we move any further in. Famine, you're going to heal, and so is war. Plague is the only one who's gotten, gotten away completely unscathed, so I guess my reliance on his high health to allow him to tank out damage hasn't worked out for the best for me yet. But I think the idea is sound, nonetheless. Send them all back to their respective stations, power out the medbay, put it back in the engines, and let's keep moving. Here we go. What do we have over here? We find a rebel automated scout floating to the beacon. Appears to be in pristine condition, although deactivated. Let's try and download the ship's data stores, because it's almost always the best choice, especially because it doesn't look like it has any offensive weaponry here. We attempt to download it, and it gets reactivated immediately. So weapons go, oh, it has ball, oh, that's a triple laser. That's unfortunate. Stupid burst laser mark two. You looked, you looked harmless when you were in the ship. All right. Load this thing up, shoot them, they're probably going to shoot us. Lots of bombs, lots of lasers. Don't get killed. They don't even have any defenses at all, so we should be okay, and that shot missed, so that worked out for the best. One more shot to the helm to prevent them from running, and then we can kill them at our leisure. Nothing you can do, you poor drone. One more salvo into the engines, not that it matters where we aim. It would be nice to get the artillery beam leveled up, though, because that thing's a lot of fun when you get it to max level. But for the time being, I think we're going to work a little bit on surviving. So, we destroyed the drone, giving us two missiles, a drone part, and 23 scrap. Unfortunately, didn't give us any map data or anything, which would have been nice. But, that's okay. We're going to keep moving. What do we have here? We find a small ship is decloaked behind us. We immediately power up ships, shields, and weapons, but they continue on their trajectory unimpressed. We try to calm our nerves. To be fair, we would only have uh, Burst Laser Mark II. The artillery beam is pretty impressive, but only when it charges up. In 50 seconds, not that impressive. Alright, we jump forwards and find a mercenary at this beacon. Their unique skills can sometimes prove to be useful, as the game says. We can hire them to delay the rebels by one turn, we can hire them to scout the sector for us and get us some map data, but I don't like paying for that. Or we can fight them! And you know what? We're gonna fight them. Mercenaries are worse than rebels, we say, and the only normal course is to engage them in battle. They do have potentially very dangerous weapons, especially if that's an Ion Blast 1, but I think it's a heavy Ion, which means we should be safe. It shouldn't be able to do more than one layer of shield damage. I don't know, it's an... it's... I don't know what that is. Some kind of basic Ion weapon, I guess. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Anyway, they can't really hurt us, so we can just take them out at our leisure. I'm actually going to shoot them in the oxygen. I don't know if I'm going to... oh, you missed! Ugh, okay. 
Now we need to hit them in the weapons again, otherwise they will have things back up to normal and they might be able to do some damage. And we're not particularly interested in taking damage at this point. Hit them, please. There we go. You're missing like crazy. I guess we should hit them in the helm, otherwise we're going to keep doing that. So rather than just sit around taking additional damage for no reason, let's try and survive some. There we go. Now they can't dodge, so we can take them out at our leisure. We don't have to worry. And the artillery beam comes in doing a whole pile of damage. And the burst laser is going to finish them off like that. And down they go. Nice try there, slug interceptor. The ship explodes, even behind a substantial collection of useful scrap. We get three fuel, drone part, and 19 of the metal itself. Very nice. Let's keep moving this way. I am looking for a store now to try and get some repairs. We find another unmanned rebel scout. No way around the fight. They oh ooh, 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 ooh. they have a dual. I uh, have a burst laser mark one here. I think yeah, it's a burst laser mark one. They have an attack drone and missiles. That could be bad for. Ooh, that was fast. You are the fastest shooting little drone I've ever seen. You just knocked all my shields out. Stop it. Wow, that was crazy. Okay, hit them in the weapons. They missed a bunch of shots. That's good. We knocked out one of their weapons. Not the important one. The Lido missile is still online. We want to get that thing offline as quickly as possible because it will penetrate shields. And if it doesn't keep missing like it has been, which is incredibly lucky for us, we'll be in a lot of trouble soon. And we didn't even knock it out yet. We gotta stop missing, but these are drones, so they do have a very high dodge. Although they keep missing us with those rockets, which I definitely can't complain about. That's incredibly lucky for us. Hit them and knock them out, please. Yes, weapons are now offline. We can focus on taking out the helm now, so they won't be able to keep dodging us like they have been. But we can basically let the drone keep leveling up our shields crew. There's no reason for Famine to be unhappy about that. There we go. We've knocked out the helm. And the next... Well, it'll take another two salvos to kill them, because we only have... Oh, never mind. Artillery beam decided to come in and finish the fight for us. Ship explodes, giving us a missile, a drone part, and 23 scrap. That's one of the nice things about the artillery beam. Although you don't have to count on it, it's great for finishing fights, because about 50 seconds, probably about as long as it'll be until the last blow needs to be taken. Only problem is, if you do forget about it when you're doing something like boarding, then it's not quite as appreciated. We have a distress beacon over here. We could jump straight there. Let's jump here first, though. What is over here? Another fight from the sounds of it. We've arrived at an empty system with unfortunate pirates there. Alright, a ship appears from behind the planet and hails us, saying that they are also the Dread Pirate Tuco, and also we should prepare to die. You know, I thought I just killed you. I could be wrong, but I thought I just killed you. The ion weapon is completely irrelevant. The dangerous thing here is they have rockets, and we can't do anything about them. Cannot do a thing about them. And they hit us in the helm directly. That's not so good. Alright, since you are no longer dodging anything, Death, get in there and help repair it. I could move Famine as well, because honestly, he isn't doing anything either. But, that's okay. And miss. Awesome. We have about seven health left. Not the best. But their resultant shields are down, so if we can hit them in the weapons, we should be able to take them out. As long as we don't get hit too much. Here we got another miss. That's good. That's what I like to see. Hit them with a burst laser two in the weaponry. And you missed, guys. That was... You knocked out the, the weapon I don't care about. It's the rocket that's important. And they hit us in the artillery beam. That's disappointing. The artillery beam will not be firing in this fight then, since it is now offline, resetting the timer completely. However, they have no active weapons anymore, so that's not so much of a problem. We're going to hit them in the shields, I think. If we hit all three shots, they're trying to surrender, giving us two missiles of drone part and 13 scrap. We will not accept, thank you very much. There we go. Now all we have to do is hit them with our remaining three shots, if we can kill them in a single salvo. Having six health only is fairly uncomfortable, though. I don't like having such low health. Unfortunately for them, they are destroyed. So, we gather three fuel, drone part, and 20 scrap from them. Definitely worth not accepting that bribe. And keep going. Alright, we really need repairs, though. Really, really. We have 85 scrap, so there's no point in holding on to all of it anymore. We are going to spend some of it on something. I think we're going to spend some of it on more dodge ability, because honestly, if we don't, we're going to regret it very soon. And we're going to hold on to the rest of our money in case we find some way that we can get repairs soon, because that's definitely more important than leveling up anything else. It appears that a stress beacon is coming from the surface of a nearby moon. Our sensors are picking up a single life form, so we go down to the surface to investigate. We find that a colony has been recently attacked. Exploring the devastation, we find a lone survivor. We could take him to join our crew, because having an additional crew to do things like repairs and repel borders would be great, but this, taking him home to his family on a nearby planet in the system, does give us a chance of getting free hull repair. So we're going to try that, because that's what we need at the moment. Alright, the family apparently owns one of the most valuable mining enterprises in the sector, and for the safe return of his son, the patron of the family offers us a substantial reward, giving us 26 scrap. Eh, it's not quite as good as I wanted, but it is definitely not bad. 
we're going to use that to level up our artillery beam, I think. Yes, let's do that. Level up the artillery beam. Make it a little bit faster. A little bit faster. Now, let's keep moving, I guess. I should have held on to that some of that money, like I was just talking about doing, but I got greedy, so that's, how, that's what happens. We're immediately contacted by a settlement here, saying, Hello, travelers. Your ship seems to be outfitted for combat. Care to take up a bit of mercenary work? Let's listen to the offer. Some of our friends have taken to piracy in the recent chaos of the war, they say. We'd like you to convince them of their poor decision by severely damaging their ship. We'll pay you well, as long as you don't kill them all. Now, we're definitely going to accept this, although we are at very dangerously low health, because it has a fairly good chance of giving us an additional weapon at the end. And a weapon would be great right now. Just be sure not to blow them up, they say nervously as they direct us to a nearby moon. We find the pirate ship docked there. We immediately respond... Bleh, they immediately respond to our appearance with, Your money or your life! They must be new to this. Also, they can't hurt us, so this will be easy. They have a heavy laser mark one, which can't get through our shields, and a beam weapon, which can't get through our shields. We're going to hit them in the weapons. No, we're not even hit them in the weapons. Let's hit them in the helm so they can't run away or anything. Or dodge. That would be nice. And, uh, no, we should be pretty much good to go. We'll hit them in the oxygen next. Give them the shields, actually. Give them something to think about. Oh, they repaired that quite quickly. They must have a bunch of energy on board. And they only did one damage to the shields. But that's okay, because we can sit here all day and they can't hurt us. I'm not sure what else we could get from these guys, but we're going to keep fighting them and find out. And if we do get to a store and don't have enough money to buy repairs, I can always sell that drone we found. And that would be better than nothing. We also leveled up a bunch of our skills, which is great. And they're getting quite injured, so hopefully they're going to call out for help soon. There we go. They hail our ship, saying, You win! We're not cut out for this! Let's let them live and return to the settlement. Alright, with the pirates dissuaded from their career path, we return to the settlement. Thank you, their friends say. They returned to us before you did. I don't think we'll need this anymore. They give us 23 scrap and a hull missile. A hull missile, not the best possible outcome, but definitely better than nothing. If we can power up that system to be able to use it, that would be pretty nice. We really, really need health, though. So we've got how many jumps left? We've got probably one, two, three, maybe four jumps left. So we're going to go this way around. Hopefully there's no suns here, because that would be deadly. That would definitely be the worst possible outcome. A small pirate ship messages us, saying, That sure is a shiny ship you got there. We fire a warning shot across their bow, and they respond, Hey, no need for violence. It was just a comment. Well, that's fine. Oh, there's a store! Yes, yes, yes! Perfect. Alright, we're actually going to jump straight here. <laughs> straight here, because we want to get those repairs without having a chance of dying on the way. Alright, a well-armed transport ship and a squadron of fighters are in orbit nearby. We're wary of their trustworthiness, but beggars can't be choosers. So we head in there and buy all of the... Oh, it's cheap, too. We buy all of that we can afford, all the repairs we can get. We also choose to sell our defense drone, maybe? Yeah, if we need to get another one later, we can. We'll sell the defense drone, use that money at the current time. Level ourselves up to that, which is pretty good. And I think we're going to spend the remaining money we have on our ship to buy level 2 doors. Because I am concerned, there we go, that we're going to have borders soon in the upcoming areas, and we're really not equipped to deal with them yet. This will make us a little bit more survivable if they do arrive. Now we have a couple jumps left here. We have one, two, maybe only two. But let's jump here anyway and see what we can get. We have at least this jump before we have to get to the exit. Making our way here, we find that a rebel ship moves in to engage us. We attempt to open communications to realize the futility of our actions. We see that the ship is run by an AI. Alright then, they have rockets and bombs and... That well, doesn't do... Any. That's a weird combination of stuff because the ion weapon doesn't do anything to either of those. I might actually try... No, there's no point trying to use the whole missile. Well, I guess there kind of is. We didn't even get through the, sh the shields that time. Let's power up the hull missile and try and use this this time. If we can hull missile them in the weapons, we should be able to take out maybe both of those. They ion an empty room because they're fools, missile an empty room because they're... We got lucky that time. We should be able to hull missile them at about the same time their weapons fire again. As long as they don't hit us in the weapons room, we'll be happy with it. They take out our oxygen instead, but our missile misses. Ah, oh, come on. As long as they don't take out our artillery beam now, I'll be happy. And they ion our weapons, which means we're basically sitting ducks. Great. And here goes the artillery beam. I can't even... Ugh. It did knock out the bombs. So that's something. The missile hit another empty room. There's nothing we can do here until this recharges. That's a long, long stun. 
Yeesh. Okay, here comes another missile. Guys, dodge, dodge. Hit them in the weapons and the engines this time. We're actually going to send Famine over to help because there's honestly no point to having him in that room. We're going to turn on the, the burst laser since they do have a damaged shield. Hit them in the weapons, hopefully, and take them out. As long as they don't hit... Actually, they can't hit us in the weapons. I don't really care, but that hurt. Ouch! That put a big fire in our engine. Put that fire out quickly, guys. Get back on the attack. We've knocked out their weapons, so they can no longer hurt us, thankfully. That's a pretty painful battle, though. Good thing I bought all those repairs, otherwise we probably would have died there. We took about five damage. We'd have one health left at this point. I'm gonna get send them back to the med bay, and the artillery beam should kill them for us. <laughs> Problem solved. Ship explodes, giving us three fuel, one missile, and 19 scrap. Alright. Heal these guys up. Is everyone else okay? You're actually a bit damaged now, too, eh, Plague? You can go heal up, too. You're so slow, though. Okay, Famine back in the shields. Uh, death back in the engines. Uh, while you're healing up, let's take a look at our skills. You're actually a level 2 guy. Wow, both both of our engines and helm are level 2 already. War is just a level 1, and Famine is also just at level 1. That's pretty good, though, for only being in the second sector. Hard to complain too much about that. Power back where it's supposed to be. And let's jump to the exit, because we do not have enough time for another free jump. What do we find at the exit? We find... We've arrived at the Long Range Beacon, where we discover that there are intelligent life forms on a nearby planet. We can't find any match for them in the database, so we choose to investigate. We land our small shuttle in an enormous field, whose only occupants are small, brightly colored, six-legged, horse-like animals. Could they be what our scans picked up? Well, we could try and bring some of the creatures on board to sell, but that seems to have a you get some money or you get a bad option. This one has you get nothing or you get a really good option, getting a free NG and some money. So let's do this one. Try and communicate peacefully. We try to communicate in every possible way, but they just stand there, silently judging us with their large, expressionless eyes. We prepare to leave. That's unfortunate. Could have been better than that, but at least it wasn't a bad outcome. Let's jump onwards. We got choice of the rock-controlled sector or the Zoltan-controlled sector, and as much as I dislike missiles, we are staying away from the Zoltan, because we do not have the weapons to deal with them. So we're going to the rock-controlled sector, which unfortunately means we're going to have to go through a nebula next, but c'est la vie. Here we go. Alright, the rock people have a particularly aggressive stance towards alien races trespassing in their space. We should definitely tread ter care blah, blah, blah. definitely tread carefully here. Excellent. However, we're gonna have to stop this episode here for now. As we made it to the third sector, that's where we normally have to stop. If you have enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like the episode. Thank you very much for watching, because this has been Vanguard of Valor with another episode of FTL on board the VSS Apocalypse with the riders of said apocalypse. Now, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.